Hi, this is Kevin from the Maths Oros, and in this video we're looking at question 2 from the Oxford Maths Admissions Test from 2019. Don't forget I've got playlists covering uh, most of the papers from 2016, 2017 and 2018 as well that you can uh, find by going to my website, uh, links below. Check out the Amazon store for suggestions about wider reading and things like that. And please, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me get this content out there. And I'd love this content in particular to reach the widest possible audience so it can help students from all different backgrounds to prepare uh, for this challenging paper. So good luck with the exam if you're taking it uh, this year and I'll get on with the question. So we've got k a positive integer and we're going to define this polynomial pkx uh, by multiplying 1 plus x by 1 plus x squared by 1 plus x cubed and we keep going until we finally multiply by 1 plus x to the k and that gives us a polynomial uh, with some coefficients we're going to say the degree is capital N and the coefficients are a0 all the way up to an so it says write down the degree n of pk of x in terms of k okay so what's it saying what's the highest order term here in terms of k well um, the highest order term is going to be come by come from multiplying the x by x squared by x cubed by x to the k so by the uh, rules of indices here it's fairly easy to see that this capital N is just 1 plus 2 plus 3 etc and then finally uh, we add on k so you might just know the formula for this if not you can say it's an uh, arithmetic progression with first term 1 uh, common difference 1 and the number of terms here is k so the sum here uh, capital N we can just use the formula, you know, n over 2, so that's k over 2, 2 times a plus uh, n minus 1 times d, which is just 1. Uh, and you can simplify this, and this is just k times k plus 1 over 2. So that's the value. Uh, so, so that's the uh, order of the polynomial that will be the highest power of x once we multiply all this stuff out. Right, I'll leave the basic definition of pkx up here as we go through this question. Um, in part two it says, by setting x equals one or otherwise, explain why a max is larger than or equal to a two to the k divided by capital N plus one, where a max is this largest coefficient out of all of the a n's. Um, you know, sometimes you can do uh, questions easily by the otherwise, but I would strongly encourage you if you're told to do something on one of these questions just to do it. So if we set x equals one here, Okay, we get pk of 1, so that is equal to 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 squared, etc., all the way up to 1 plus 1 to the k, but obviously 1 to any power is 1, so this is just 2 times 2 times 2 uh, all the way up to uh, k, so this is just equal to 2 to the k, right? Um, but it's also equal to uh, a0 plus a1 um, all the way up to a n, right, because if I put x equals 1, all of the terms on the right hand side just give us the coefficients here, and there are n plus 1 terms here, and uh, you know each of these has to be less than or equal to the maximum term, so this must be less than or equal to n plus 1 times uh, a max, okay, so you know I've got 2 to the k here, right, is less than or equal to m plus 1 times a max and uh, that just rearranges then to give that uh, a max is greater than or equal to 2 to the k divided by m plus 1 and that's what we want to show. Right so in part 3 it says fix i greater than or equal to 0 explain why the value of ai eventually becomes constant as a k increases. Okay so what it's saying here is that you know um, let's say let's say I've computed this and I've got you know, a4, I've got the power of x to the 4, right? If I keep adding on additional brackets here, 1 plus x to the 4, 1 plus x to the 5, 1 plus x to the 6, at some point, that coefficient of x to the 4 doesn't change with, with later brackets. And if you think about this in a particular case for a little while, it's fairly clear that it's true at least, I think, so we just need to find a way of, of, of writing it down. So, um, uh, so what I would say is do something like this. You know, let's say if we just consider... Let's just think about a couple of uh, crucial uh, terms here. In fact, let's say if you take pix, okay, um, I'm going to overkill this one just a little bit. 1 plus x, 1 plus x squared, all the way up to 1 plus x to the i. 
Okay, my argument is this, this is the last this is the last point at which xi can change here, where I multiply by um, you know x x to the i times one. That's the last point that the coefficient of x to the i can change, that the ai can change, right? Because if you look at p i plus one of x, right, that's just all of these terms, p i of x multiplied by one plus x to the i plus one. And if we just multiply this out, we get p i of x. Uh, plus x to the i plus 1 times p i of x, right? And the point is here, all of these terms, right, have order strictly bigger than i because they're all multiplied by x to the i plus 1, right? So, uh, so actually you see here that, um, uh, you know, so, so, uh, so a i in, um, in pi of x, you know, just equals uh, a i in p i plus one of x, and this is also true for all uh, all um, larger k. Um, so where k is bigger than i, uh, the coefficient of um, x to the i doesn't uh, doesn't change, right? So uh, so we can say that uh, a i is constant um, for k greater than or equal to i. Okay, you might want to add a few extra words in your explanation, but something uh, something like that to be reasonably clear. Uh, definitely put the algebraic part of the argument in because somehow if you've written that, it's very clear that you've seen the argument. Um, you should also add some words in to be convincing. So um, part four, it says a student correctly calculates for k equals six that this is p6. Um, and we're not really going to use this particular expansion here, but it does. It says on the basis of that calculation, the student guesses that a i equals a n minus i. So they've really given you this just to um, sort of help you see what this is saying, where ai equals an minus i is just saying that the coefficients are symmetric here, right? So it starts, the coefficients start 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and if I read them backwards as well, it's also 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and we've got that perfect symmetry. And again, it tells us exactly what to do to prove this part. It says by substituting x to the minus 1 for x or otherwise, show that the student's guess is correct for all positive integers k. So uh, we are very well advised to do exactly what we're told here, right? So if I do pk of uh, x to the minus 1, or or 1 over x, uh, what I get is uh, 1 plus uh, x to the minus 1, 1 plus x to the minus 2, all the way up to 1 plus x to the minus k. And the crucial thing to notice here is that if you multiply this by x to the capital N, uh, right, because, and, I, and I've chosen x to the capital N because that's exactly the order of this term, so I can multiply the first bracket by x, the next one by x squared, by x cubed, etc. Um, so, what, so what I end up with is I'd get, uh, you know, x plus one, x squared plus one, x cubed plus one, etc. And then I would get um, x to the k plus one, right? And so this thing I've got here is just exactly p k uh, of x, right? Okay, but um, so x to the n times p k of x to the minus 1 is equal to pk of x, right, okay, but we have that pk of x, right, that's just, that's a0 plus a1 of x, a1 times x, sorry, uh, plus a capital N uh, x to the n, and uh, x to the n times pk uh, of x to the minus 1, that's x to the n times a0 plus a1 x to the minus 1, all the way up to a capital N times x to the minus N. And if you multiply out the x to the N then, and let's reorder the terms, right? So actually a capital N is now the constant term, right? Then we get a M minus one uh, times x, etc. And I keep going until I get up to, um, uh, to uh, a zero times x to the N, right? Uh, so the point is that we've shown that those two, these two things are equal, right? So it must be that must be that this is equal to this, and the only way to be equal as polynomials here is if each of the 
coefficients are, are equal, right? So hence we have a0 equals a n, a1 equals a n minus 1, etc. Uh, and in general, uh, we have that a i is equal to a n minus i as required. Then in the final part, it says on the basis of the same calculation, the student guesses that all whole numbers in the range 1 up to a max appear amongst the coefficients for all positive integers k. Um, so you can kind of see that in this again in this result here, you see the, the maximum value was 5 for a coefficient, and there are some coefficients that are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So all of the you know, all of the integers up to the maximum appear somewhere in the expansion. But this time we want to show that it can't, it's not the case, right, in general. Um, you, and it says to use part two to show that the student's guess is wrong and to justify our answer. So if we just look back to part two for a second. We proved that that the maximum value always has to be larger than um, the, the, than a particular uh, than, than a particular value here, two to the k uh, over n plus one. So the idea here is that if the maximum coefficient is larger than the number of terms in the expansion then it can't be the case that all of the um, you know all, all of the the different possible coefficients are going to exist right imagine here if the maximum wasn't 5 but it was 500 say right there'd just be no way that all of the numbers between 1 and 500 could be coefficients because there aren't 500 coefficients to choose so that's the idea of what we want to do here and in a sense it's um, it, it's it's not too hard because you know actually you know, capital N here is also expressible in terms of K. We did that in part one. That's K times K plus one over two, right? And uh, so, you know, we know that, so, so A max, right, is going to be larger than or equal to two to the K over this K, K plus one over two. So I could just put the plus one on the top here. And I really just want to find uh, a value of K then for which this is larger than n, right? Okay, so I'm not I'm not saying this is true yet. I'm just saying I want to find a k such that this is true, right? Such that this is bigger than k k plus one over two. So at this point, you can just make an argument if you want to to say, well, look, I've got two to the power of on the top, which is an exponential, and I've got um, you know I've got a polynomial on the bottom, right? Because this effectively is saying I need to find something like two to the k plus one is bigger than k squared k plus 1 squared over 2 or something I might be maybe I'm out by 1 here or something I'm not thinking about this totally clearly because I'm going to show this with an example in a second but really it's definitely possible that I can find uh, a k right like this right because um, you know it's because this exponential this 2 to the power of k grows so much faster right so this one grows much faster uh, right than this. So there is going to be a value of k for which this is true. Um, because this grows so much faster, actually one easy way to do this question, rather than messing about with some super detailed, uh, you know, precise calculation here, you could just say, uh, you know, e.g., let's say if I took k is equal to 100, right, that's going to be way more than uh, we need, right? We say, So a max here is going to be uh, greater than or equal to 2 to the 101 divided by 100 um, times uh, 101, okay, and that is just much, much bigger uh, than uh, than the n here, right? Which is uh, k k plus one over two, which is 5,050, right? Um, you know, so for k equals 100, right? Um, you know, there are many. Uh, fewer terms in the uh, expanded polynomial uh, than um, than the uh, so yeah many 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 fewer terms in the poly polynomial than the maximum right than a max okay um, so uh, so they can't. So, they, so you'd have to just write down something like this. So they can't all be uh, be in the expan in in the expansion. Okay, I should I maybe I shouldn't say they can't they can't all be, but 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 you know uh, so instead of they here, let's write so 
one, two, up to A max, can't all be in the expansion. Um, if you've thought about these sort of things before, this is sometimes also called the pigeonhole principle, right? Uh, which basically says, you know, if I've if I've got uh, if I've got uh, you know ten pigeonholes where people might get their post. Uh, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, doesn't matter how many there are already. If I've got 10 pigeonholes and I've got 11 letters, right, I can't just put, I'm going to have to put at least two two letters in one pigeonhole. Or similarly, if I've only got eight letters, I can't fill up all the pigeonholes. It's a very simple, straightforward principle, but we use this to uh, to express this idea when we're just sort of counting how many objects there are to go in uh, in, in, in different places. Okay, so that's the end of uh, question two. As I say, I've tried to write out reasonably clear answers here, but uh, you may want to try to write these slightly more precisely and include some of the things that I've said if you want to make sure you get all the marks uh, for a full answer. So I hope that was useful. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the bell button to get notifications if you want to know when the next videos in this series uh, are coming out. And um, I will see you in the next video.